So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started. So thank you guys for um, joining us this afternoon. Welcome to Liberty Technology Advisors webcast, The Value of Implementing a New ERP System. A quick look at today's agenda. I'm Brad Robinson uh, with LTA and uh, we're going to go ahead and do some quick introductions and then we'll go ahead and spend a bulk of the time talking through the presentation and we'll wrap up with Q&A. Uh, and on that note, if you do have a question during the presentation while Rich is talking, feel free to send that over via the uh, chat or the Q&A portal and we'll make sure to address it. If we can, we'll address it in real time. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and save it for that Q&A section at the end. So just a little bit about Liberty Technology Advisors. We are a 100% independent strategic management consulting company uh, founded in 1995. We have a team of expert enterprise software consultants. Everyone's averaging 20 years of experience at LTA. So that's something we definitely pride ourselves in. And as far as what we do, our bread and butter tends to be ERP selection, BPR and ERP implementation, uh, but we do have uh, a bench of capability to handle anything from IT assessment, providing a temporary CIO, uh, dealing with the aftermath of cyber attacks. Because we do have older consultants, we do have a wide breadth of experience and competence to take on almost any uh, project that comes up. And a look at our guest today. Uh, we are uh, going to be joined by Rich Farrell. Rich has an extensive career, and you can take a look on the screen, but he's most likely been in your shoes before. He can help you peek behind the curtains and identify those tiger traps before you step into them. Uh, he's an end user of Deltac and SAP, and he's been a project manager for Deltac and a custom maritime ERP implementation, and he's been a consultant for over 10 years implementations across many industries and multiple countries. And uh, so with that, I would like to go ahead and turn it over to Rich. Rich, are you there? I'm, I'm here, Brad. And uh, thank you so much for that generous introduction. Of course. So I am the handsome devil that was on the screen. Now we're looking at, at show me the money. And, and I, the whole uh, point of this today is to talk about the value of implementing a new ERP. You've all undoubtedly heard all the sales pitches, right? Of improved productivity that some customers see anywhere from a 25 to 50% increase in productivity with uh, consequential uh, margin increases and greater profitability. Information, there's, there's no doubt that uh, you'll get real-time information fatter, faster and access to data with better accuracy and that translates into uh, speed of decision and better forecasting. So one of the, the the big things that they really talk about too is having one version of the truth. That way everyone from the CEO all the way down to the shop floor kind of knows what's going on and that leads to not only better productivity, but I think something that's becoming much more increasingly important is customer service as well too. Asset management. You can find improved ways to manage your assets, to see how it impacts revenue, having just enough inventory and not carrying a lot of excess inventory. In addition to the tools for scheduling, managing supply chain, purchasing and forecasting, all those things are, are all valuable uh, things that an ERP does. But I would like to kind of talk about as well too, is, is it's also a chance to take a look at your business, take a breath and figure out where you really want to go. Because after all, we spend a lot of time uh, talking about hardware and software, but I don't think we spend enough time really talking about people where looking at your business and seeing uh, where you actually want to go. So if we look at the next slide and time, right? That's one of the most valuable commodities that we have and it's increasingly perishable. And really what, what an ERP system does is it, if implemented properly and you do all of the, the great foundational work to do it properly, you'll have much better processes and improve your real-time working abilities. Each department does something a little bit differently and every time a new employee comes on board and, and they have to inherit a legacy system that doesn't talk to each other, I mean, you find that you, it's like a compass that will precess over time, right? Putting everything on one ERP system is a chance to put everything under one big circus tent 
and to standardize your procedures and your documents so that when you onboard new employees, they have the same knowledge base as folks that have been working there five to 10 years. Um, faster updates. I mean, some of these uh, systems or softwares, the system NetSuite comes to mind and you can work it completely in the cloud and it can be hands off where they'll manage all the updates, all the upgrades, and you just uh, pay a subscription service or you can even do it on premise and, uh, and, and do it yourself. But the, the issue is rather than trying to, to you, you've seen the old vaudeville act where a guy's spinning plates on a stick, instead of spinning several different plates on several different sticks, you just really have to worry about one system to update and keep it upgraded. Uh, one of the biggest things too people like that saves time is easier reporting for financial management. It gives you real time access of, of what's going on and it, it enables you to see where your money's doing and what it's doing at that very second. Uh, reduced admin costs. You know, every time you, you log it into a system, it, 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 it creates a, a record that is altered. And, and the ERP system, instead of having to go into multiple different systems or manage multiple different spreadsheets, you have a clear audit trail, which saves you time and you can export it in any format really that you want to configure and, and save yourself as well time to doing that instead of having to reform it. Uh, spreadsheets and figure out what the ground truth is, so on and so forth. Supply chain management, wow. This is a big area as well too, because you actually know the time it takes to to get things from suppliers, to actually produce it, to uh, ship it, to uh, to get it there. In, instead of having a lot of guesswork and, and putting over um, exaggerated times or underestimating the time, you can have better supply chain management and uh, and be able to do that as well too. And finally, I think one of the biggest thing is relationship management. These systems, uh, if they don't have their own uh, customer resource management system in there, they almost all integrate with Salesforce or, or Workday or, or someone that, that can help you do that. And here's a, a key fact I, I don't think it's said enough is that a 5% increase in customer retention has shown to increase profitability by 75%. We, we live in an information world now and uh, customers are, are, are very finicky and they're very demanding. And I think paying attention to uh, customer service and, and customer uh, retention, it, it makes sense in the long run. So these are all things that the ERP system uh, can give you. And looking at the, uh, the next slide, big data, right? Big data helps you leverage your ERP systems better. I mean, uh, it helps you enhance all that information density that you get. There's a whole lot of data out there. And I, I wanna emphasize the difference between collecting data and really gleaning information from it because those are really two different concepts. You can collect a lot of data, but without any context or any way to kind of manage it and to, uh, to machine that data into something usable, it, it, it becomes a little bit overwhelming and a bit of a tsunami. So with ERP systems, they help you manage the big data by improving your scheduling and your product management. Um, you, you'll find that information will be more immediate and readily available due to the way that everything is interconnected and, and, and really a constellation of delivery devices. If you need data from multiple mobile enterprise field service units, that's exactly possible and it's available real time. If you need data from remote manufacturing outlets or even individual machines, all of that is available on modern ERP systems and all those data points can be can be looked at, they can be investigated, and also you can, you can start lead turning issues instead of uh, lagging behind them. Business intelligence is another big area that ERP systems are, have really been focusing on as of late. Uh, one of the most challenges uh, you'll see is that you don't know what you don't know. And, and again, big data helps that a lot. It, it helps you leverage opportunities to resolve issues that need more information. It helps you, uh, you kind of gather all the input you need to speed up your decision making. And it also helps you lead to overall forecast accuracy too. So you can begin to be a little bit more predictable instead of reactive. And then uh, another area that I like is uh, QA, especially in manufacturing. You can monitor every real-time data point along a production line. So you can get better results while it's in progress instead of having to deal with pro uh, problems after uh, they hit the floor or uh, after it's been machined. You can actually uh, insert uh, your, uh, your analysis real-time and be able to, to affect things as they're moving down the floor. So the bottom line is, especially for manufacturers, having control of big data and understanding this information helps you with your product quality and your defect tracking. It helps with your supply planning. 
It helps uh, with your output forecasting energy efficiency. We're a, a much greener planet where people are starting to worry about being more energy efficient. This is a way to find those inefficiencies and in how you're using your machines and how you're using energy and to kind of kind of become a little bit more uh, tight on that budget. And finally, uh, support for mass customization and manufacturing. Oh my gosh, it's just uh, incredible how it can help. The next thing, uh, the next slide, and the, and the next thing we like to talk about is money, right? How is an ERP system going to save you money? Well, we all know that ERP systems tend to be very expensive, and everyone wants to know what the return on investment is going to be in the payback period is. Uh, one of the areas that ERP systems really pay for themselves is inventory carrying costs, and that is a major pain point for a lot of manufacturers, having a lot of capital tied up in inventory instead of having that a capital available to help fund and grow your operations in other ways by trimming down and, and not necessarily just in time in, in this uh, inventory, but having a good handle on, on what your inventory is, you can free up capital, reduce the likelihood of, of overstocking parts and components or, or having things getting damaged just while they're sitting around your, uh, your warehouse or watching, I, I had a client that they, they had a lot of their inventory just go obsolete or unused just because they, didn't have a handle on it. They didn't have real-time visibility. Modern ERP systems can help you know what your real-time stock levels are. It helps you to do uh, replenishment and uh, it could even automatically reorder materials for you if, if that's something you want to do. Another way that ERP, uh, a new ERP can help you out is an operational costs. I mean, right now I'm willing to bet a lot of folks have separate software in each department. And you know, so you got to enter data in each of these different systems a little bit differently. You have to be able to talk to these different systems. Sometimes they don't talk at all. A lot of times they just download it to a spreadsheet and then manually upload it into the the other systems. So that uh, causes a lot of errors. It causes a lot of recurring costs for licenses, updates, and training. If you think about the labor cost alone for having folks, uh, your, your qualified workers having to execute all these steps in all these different systems, I mean, that productivity really starts to add up, especially if you're in a uh, engineer order environment where you have really precise uh, steps that you have to follow, or you have a high level task like uh, designing or, uh, or any kind of computer assisted design or, or transferring multi-level bombs and very complicated bombs out of a CAD system into an ERP system, all that stuff really kind of adds up. So you got a, a modern ERP system can take a lot of those pain points away and automate that and, and make that uh, transition from your, from your design phase a lot more uh, effective. And finally, uh, real-time data. It's not a, about just what you know, but also when you know it, right? Having a real-time data, I've talked about this before, enables you to be a little bit more proactive and a little bit more um, predictive instead of reactive. Acting. You know, you can, you can go ahead and, and solve issues and problems midstream instead of waiting until the, the, uh, the cows left the barn and, and doing it that way. Uh, modern ERP systems also help with the tax issues. I mean, we're increasingly becoming a global economy and, uh, w you know, it's not uncommon to have uh, manufacturing facilities in China and India and uh, they all have different tax codes and the way they do tax laws and it, it's a full-time job just updating those different issues and ERP solution can help you um, with what I consider life's second most widely pronounced inevitability of taxes you know the first one being death I mean if, if you don't die you're certainly gonna have to pay taxes to someone and like I said just I was talking about internationally, but even the tax codes among the multiple states in the United States, uh, provinces in Canada, are, I mean, each one of them has different compliance regulations. Each one of them has different compliance implications. And modern ERP systems or uh, best of breed third party systems like a, an Avalara for tax can really help you in this area. And it, they'll more than pay for themselves in the time it's going to save you from uh, having to enter in all that information for all those different entities, as well as make sure it's correct. So this is a great thing. And then finally, one of the big things, I don't think gets talked about enough, but one of the, I, I think the big uh, bangs for ERP systems is it takes all that tribal knowledge that is in your seasoned workers and it puts it into a system where it can be accessible to, to the younger folks. Um, there's a lot of talk in the press about the handoff between baby boomers and millennials. Uh, millennials are going to be the largest demographic coming up. And, uh, you know, 
your, your best folks tend to know their, their manufacturing operations like the back of their hand. How are you going to replace them when they win the lottery or they retire or, or you know, you, you have all that great tribal knowledge on your manufacturing systems. You need to capture that. You need to quantify it and you need to be able to pass it on to uh, the next generation, literally. So an ERP can help you hold that institutional knowledge. It can help you kind of transition how you get that knowledge out of the, the, the heads of your, your, your seasoned workforce and as well as uh, help the, the level of skill and specialization that the new staffers need as they come on board. And the next slide, we, we talk about efficiencies. I mean, it, this one's pretty much a no brainer. It's, it's a way to keep team members on the same page. Having team sites and employee portals help them work together more productive, uh, productively and uh, you can get uh, a better communications across your your whole organization. It also uh, helps with communications and problem solving, right? It, it, you know, when, when you're connected to an ERP system, folks have a view of the larger vision and they have a better understanding of how impacts in one uh, team or, or department really fit into the overall business objectives. And, and, and it also creates synergy as well too, as engaged employees, because the more people know and they know how interactive they are and, and, and what their what their actions, how they'll impact others, it'll increase productivity across the company. And, and again, um, you're able to kind of manage progress across the uh, the entire enterprise and, and make sure that your benchmarks are being met. Or you can see when someone's struggling and they need more help or a line needs a lot of attention, or you can reinforce that something that's off track gets turned into new tracks. So uh, there's a lot of efficiencies that can be gleaned by a new ERP system. But if we look at the next slide and talk about standards, here's really what I want to say. I said, you know, th there's no surprise that technology is really moving quickly. And there's a lot of fear of missing out out there. I think, uh, you know, that if we don't keep up with our competitors that will be left behind. But here's something I want to, I want to talk about this a little bit counterintuitive. And I don't think a whole lot of uh, ERP sales folks really talk about is that, uh, an ERP system alone is not a silver bullet. Just implementing any ERP system is not going to automatically solve all of your problems or make sure that you're profitable or increase your margins. Um, you'll hear a lot of sales guys talk about how ERP systems are a source of a competitive advantage. I push back on that a little bit because ERP has become pretty much uh, ubiquitous and, and to some extent it's become commoditized. Therefore, you know, investments in, in IT systems, including ERP, are not as, as likely to be a source of competitive advantage as they, was in the, as they were in the past because a lot of folks have access to ERP systems and they, there's kind of a, a lid to fit every jar out there from all from the small mom and pop uh, t-shirt shop all the way up to huge multi-billion dollar corporations. So. Uh, the, the point I'm trying to make, it's not the ERP system, it's what you do with it that really counts because an ERP system is just a catalyst for change. It's just a tool in your toolbox to help you, your employees, and your business get better. There is a lot of foundational work that needs to be done to deliver on that promise. And I, I don't think there's, I, I said before, I don't think there's enough focus on the people where there's a lot of talk on and pricing on hardware and software, but uh, we need to measure the right things. You need to empower the right employees. You need to manage the change that this new system will have. And, and you need to take all that into account. Um, finally, ERP systems are not easy to implement. I, I think you need a business coach. I, I would love it if you would talk to my friends at LTA and, and, and hire them. But if not, I mean, please, uh, do your due diligence, seek out and, and get someone to kind of help you uh, walk through it. It's just like a personal trainer, you know, I mean, we all know we need to go to the gym and we need to exercise more and, and, and do various things, but it's a lot harder to do on your own than it is with a personal trainer that, that kind of helps you along the way to make sure that your form's correct and, and to kind of nag you to make sure that you're doing it correctly and you're doing it often enough. Well, an ERP implementation is the same way. You really could do it on your own, but I think the path is a lot better if you have a business coach to kind of help you do it, to, to do three things really is to have those hard conversations with you that you know you need to have, but you're not going to have probably on your own to kind of help you see the way to, to kind of paint a, a vision of future success and, and show you what has worked for other companies as well as what could work for you. And, and to also give you that lift to know that your, your company is capable of doing a lot more than you really think you are. So 
an example of the, these foundational pros, uh, processes that I always talk about are, are, are baselining your current processes. You need to do that. You need to look at your future state. And I would find someone that you, you, you trust, someone that uh, has done this before, you know, a well-seasoned uh, group of guys that have been CIOs, CEOs, CFOs, uh, as well as production managers and operations managers, and, and kind of help you uh, future state your processes and say, hey, this is really where you need to go in the future, and then find an ERP system that aligns with those future state processes. That, that really is, is the way to go. Um, th the other thing is I, I highly recommend change management. There's a lot of great groups out there to do it, but this is a big change for a lot of folks and it needs to be messaged, managed, and carefully cultivated. Otherwise, uh, folks will, if not provide friction, but they will outright resist the change because it's just kind of human nature. And finally, give yourself the time to do things right. Give yourself adequate time to do that, that uh, ERP implementation and try not to, uh, to rush it too much. That's pretty much most of my pitch, I thought I would, I'd finish up with a couple of real live examples. Um, we have uh, case studies for three. I don't think I have time to do three. I'll probably just do two. But let's do the first one, which is a, uh, a great uh, hydraulics manufacturer. Really interesting. They, they were a family-owned company, and they've, they've kind of grown to be this global empire located in the northern U.S., and they got factories in, in China, India, and England. Uh, they had a 20-year-old ERP system. And, and quite frankly, they had ERP systems in, um, in different parts of the world that were heavily customized and really at, at the end of their shelf life. And uh, they uh, had a lot of difficulty communicating with each other. I mean, not only was there the language and cultural barriers, but there was just the, the digital barriers that they couldn't get across. At, but I got to tell you, these folks really did it right. They, they spent about six months doing their due diligence. Uh, really interviewing different firms, different ERP systems, talking to different clients of these ERP systems, what went well, what went poorly, and uh, they, they did a lot of front-end research. They, uh, they budgeted adequately both in time and money on what it would take to, to roll out an ERP implementation on uh, three continents. They created a full-time project team and backfilled those positions so that, that folks could really focus on the ERP implementation because it, it will be a full-time job and uh, if, if done correctly, you will consume people uh, fairly quickly. So they have a realistic go live date. I mean, they listen to the vendors and more importantly, they listen to other end users of the ERP software and found out how long it really is going to take. And they kind of bit the bullet and then added about 15% to that too. One of the things I think that makes a difference is their, their project sponsor and their project uh, program manager are just hyper capable people. I mean, they're just very competent. Um, if I had 10 of these people, I could rule the world, I, I tell you. But, um, but what they did right is they, they secured a full-time project team, and ERP is their full-time job for the next uh, uh, 16 months. They got enough outside help that, to help them do it. They've invested in change management, and they really have invested a lot of time in training and uh, making sure they have the time to do it. Another technique I liked, which was really interesting, is they – they found what I call graybeards, but pretty senior guys that did ERP implementations in the past in different areas like uh, operations, manufacturing, quality, and brought them in and, and picked their brains at critical uh, junctures to see what they were doing right, what they were doing wrong, and more importantly, they listened to them. Um, they also hired a software developer in India to kind of lead turn the, the, the software development in their ERP system. And I, I got to tell you, these guys really are the gold standard for, uh, for ERP. Next slide. Let's talk about what not to do sometimes. Some, you know, I, I like to, to, to kind of have a sandwich or have, you, you know, a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And, and I have another company that um, I worked with in the past, and they were a, a global manufacturer of, um, of mechanical parts that, that serves the, the food and beverage as well as the manufacturing industries as well, too. They were in the uh, U.S. Midwest and Western Europe. And again, they were another large manufacturing company on two continents that were struggling with a, a decades-old ERP system. It's, it's, so the setup is, is remarkably the same, but boy, it's really a tale of two cities. It's the best of times for one company and the worst of times for the other. They had uh, major facilities in, in the U.S. and, like I said, Western Europe that had a hard time uh, coordinating with each other because the software and, 
and language and other issues. They started off really well. They, like the other company, they did a lot of front end research on how to successfully implement. They mapped their current state and did their future state processes. And they found an ERP system that's a nice uh, complement to that. And then they decided they wanted to go on it alone, that they didn't need outside help, change management, or uh, outside consultants to help them. And they all so didn't full-time their project team, their ERP team still had day jobs. So they ended up working about 18 hour days. It was really tough. And to pile onto this, I don't think they, they had a very realistic schedule. Um, they wanted to go live kind of prematurely due to some outside considerations. I mean, they didn't make the decision in a vacuum, but they were just betting that nothing would go wrong and that uh, the ERP would go without a hitch on the, on the date. And when the date came, of course, I mean, it's all very predictable. It, it didn't, you know, they, they had set a firm go live date and they just weren't ready to go live on that date. And, um, you know, th the rest is kind of history. So one of the, their big lessons learned that they said if they wanted to do it all over again is they would do change management to kind of do it uh, and then invest in, in third party consultants to kind of help them get the project going uh, well. They ended up doing that anyway to do uh, project recovery. So it wasn't like they saved the money. They ended up spending it any time. And the other issue they had too is that the change management issue is really big because they really didn't recognize or address the, the fault lines between the US and Europe. Uh, one of the biggest things I don't think they really accommodated is that um, the Europeans typically don't work 100 hour work weeks, you know, and, and good for them too. They, they, they believe in a, a life work balance. They also are legally required to take vacations and holidays in the summer and they need government approval to take those holidays and because you didn't budget enough time for your ERP wasn't a good enough reason for them. So th that's kind of some broad lessons learned that I want to talk about. And Brad, did you have any questions that we want to talk about? Um, well, first off, thank you, Rich. Uh, thanks for walking us through that. We did have one question come through and if anyone else has questions, please go ahead and submit those now either through the Q&A or the chat platform. Um, the one question I did have uh, was with regards to the big data slide, uh, do these new systems let me and my staff see the real-time analytics and uh, information that you were talking about on any device, specifically tablets uh, running either iPad or Galaxy? You know, that's a great question. And, and the answer is yes, that uh, the big ERP systems, I, I know for a sec, Microsoft has invested in a lot and uh, IFS is, is doing that as well too, is that they bring you, you can see the raw analytics on almost any device, either Android or uh, Apple and uh, you, tabs or tabs, pads or tablets, you know, and, and they, they've optimized the, the user experience for the mobile devices as well too. So you can actually kind of track the analytics real time and you can configure how much you want to massage that data, the kind of filters you want to put on it. So that's really up to you, but I, I caution you, you can get overwhelmed with data pretty quickly. So be judicious about that and give it a trial run and make sure that you, you kind of have the right temperature setting on your data to make sure that you don't get overwhelmed. Otherwise you'll, uh, instead of running your company, you'll spend all your time looking at your tablet, trying to make sense of the data. But uh, the answer is yes. Uh, in, in, and it varies widely on, on how you want to see the data and what kind of data you're going to see, but different systems do have that kind of capability. Okay. Um, perfect. Well, I do want to be respectful of everyone's time and uh, we're hitting that half hour mark. So um, I don't see any other questions that have come through. If you do have a question or if you think of something later today, uh, maybe a week from now, please go ahead and shoot an email to either myself, brad.robinson at ltadvisors.com or rich, uh, rich.farrell at ltadvisors.com. That information is on the screen. We'll be more than happy to uh, get answers and we're also happy to talk more about ERP implementations uh, and how LTA can be a help to your company. So Again, thank you to everyone who was able to join us today. Thank you, Rich, for that presentation. And uh, I hope everyone has a great rest of your week. We'll see everyone. Bye.